Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will talk about lip sync in the game engine Unity. There's multiple ways to lip sync your characters, and for this video, we will be looking at the tool Lip Sync Lite and Pro and Salsa with Randomize. Both are available on the Unity Asset Store. We will also be looking at different characters, but we will export a character from Dash Studio and from Character Creator 3. Before we start in Unity, we will have a look at Death Studio and then Character Creator 3 to export our characters. Here in Death Studio, I have a Genesis 8 female character. Over here in the Parameters pane, I just select Genesis 8 female, and then I have a long list of morphs that I can use to customize the character. More importantly, we will export those morphs so we have control over them as blend shapes in Unity. The first set of morphs that might be important is emotional expressions. So we here we have afraid, angry, and a couple others which might be relevant to you in your Unity project. Whenever you find one of those morphs that you want to use later on in Unity, simply click here on this little icon, and then on parameter settings. Up at the top, you have the name of the morph, and you should write down this morph name. Maybe just copy and paste it into a text file so you can access it later. A little further down, we have some other morphs that are related to the eyes. Important here is eyes closed, and especially eyes closed left and right. This will be important so we can actually have our characters blink, which is a functionality that is added to Lip Sync and Salsa. Morphs like mouth closed, brown, mouth open, and mouth smile are probably also important. Tongue movement is also something that you should consider, especially if you're using Lip Sync Pro. Lastly, you have a list of morphs here that are simply named after some letters of the alphabet. Now these are the most important morphs if you're using Lip Sync, Lite or Pro. These are phonemes, or actually they're called vizemes here in Dash Studio, which means these are the mouth positions that are associated with a certain phoneme, a certain sound. So here in this case, this is the mouth position that is needed for an A, for an E, and for a whole host of other phonemes, L, and so on. In order to use Lip Sync, Lite, and Pro, you should export all of these. Once you have your character all set up and you have noted all of the different morphs that you want to export, you just go to File, Export, you choose a file name for your FBX file, and here under FBX Export Options, you select FBX 2014 Binary, and then you edit your morph export rules. Here I already have a long list of morphs that I export. What you want to do now is add all of the morphs that you wrote down earlier. You can then click on Add, and paste the name of one of the morphs in here that you want to export. And over here, you just select Export, which means that morph will then show up as a blend shape in Unity. Once you're finished with your list, you can then export a list of morphs as a CSV file so you can reuse them later on. And click Accept. And if you accept here, you will export your character as an FBX file. Character Creator 3 also uses a lot of morphs. And if you go here under Modify and Morphs, you have a long list of morphs to customize your character. However, those morphs are not automatically exported to Unity. Whenever you export a character from Character Creator 3 directly to Unity, you will have a standard set of morphs which will be sufficient to use Lip Sync. However, if you want to customize that list of morphs, you will actually need a different program called 3D Exchange. That is something that we will not cover in this tutorial. Instead, I would just assume that you export your Character Creator 3 character with the default set of morphs. In order to do that, you just set up your character to your liking with different clothing and accessory items, etc. Then you go to Export and then FBX Closed Character. For the Target Tool preset, you select Unity. And then you have a choice of using Insta LOD. Keep in mind if you use Insta LOD to optimize your character, 
you can only use merge material if you also want to export blend shapes into Unity. Here it doesn't really matter which option you choose, and I have a different video tutorial that covers all those different options. However, if you use the remesher, the optimized character mesh will not export any blend shapes, so this will not be compatible with using lip sync in Unity. You can also just disable Insta LOD and just export the standard character as you have set it up without any further optimizations. And this will certainly be compatible with using lip sync in Unity. Once you're done, you click on export and you will export the FBX file to be used in Unity. Here in Unity, we now have our two characters. On the left side, there's the character creator three character, which I imported in a previous project. And I already applied the lip sync pro system here to this character. We will do this again step by step so you can follow along. On the right side there's our Dask character and we will start with the Dask character and add Sasa 3D to this character. Now first I just want to show you that we have skin mesh renderers on each of the items of the character, so on the hair, on the clothing items, on the eyelashes and on the main body. And this is important, especially the eyelashes will be important later. But for now we can see that here as this the skin mesh render, we have blend shapes that we imported. Now I only imported the phonemes and the eyes closed. Ideally you probably also want to have some other uh, emotional expressions and uh, some, some other mouth and tongue related blend shapes here, but for now we only have those. Now let's go back to the root object here and we add Sasa 3D as a component to this game object. It also automatically adds an audio source to this game object. And we now drag and drop the Genesis 8 female body game object here as a skin mesh renderer in this slot. And it automatically then links up with some of the blend shapes that we have. Unfortunately, those are not the correct ones and auto link doesn't do much for us right now. I think this is only if they're named appropriately, but ours just have some, some different naming. So what we have here now is a say small, say medium and say large index. So we basically need to find three blend shapes that represent the mouth being just slightly open, sort of being a little bit open or a little bit more open, and then being uh, wide open. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those blend shapes exactly. So all I can do is sort of find a, um, a blend shape that's approximately sort of that kind of mouth, mouth position. So let's uh, try to do that. So maybe for the large, say large, we use A. For the medium, Maybe we can use K. And for small, maybe we can do something like an S, just almost closed. Now we also have the audio source linked here that was uh, added automatically, but we need an audio clip. For the audio clip, I just recorded some audio here in Audacity, which is a free tool that is really good for recording and edit editing audio. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you. And I just exported this uh, clip, going to export and export as OGG. And now we can add this audio clip here in our audio source. Leave everything else as it is. And to start, we can just play our scene. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. And we can see, thank you. This is already working quite well. And now there's just one thing that we can do to uh, uh, tweak this. And as we can go to the Salsa 3D component again, and we have this say small, medium and large trigger, which is sort of the threshold and when the say small, medium and, and large uh, sort of trigger uh, starts. And what is it doing in the background? It's basically taking the audio file and it's using the amplitude of the audio to analyze when we're passing this threshold. And uh, so by changing those thresholds and lowering them, we basically have a, uh, make it easier for those medium and large triggers to, to play. So if we reduce this and then play again, this is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you even a bit more. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. You can see it was now thank you. playing even some medium triggers here and that's fine and we can just leave it as is. 
Now, since we're in play mode, this is not going to save, but I'll just leave it as this, and that's basically the way that you can sort of tweak a Sasa 3D. Now, keep in mind also that my, my recorded test file here really just has a fairly low amplitude, so I would ideally maybe amplify it, or record it a little bit louder, or really just deal with it, and that really the, the character sort of just whispering in this case. Now, but that already gives you a good indication of how Sasa 3D works. Sasa 3D doesn't really map to each phoneme, but it just takes the overall amplitude of the audio clip, which makes it very easy to use. So as you could see, this is a very easy setup. I don't have to really adjust much. And even if I were to use a different language or any kind of audio file, all I have to do is plug it in here, and then it will use the amplitude and generate those, uh, those blend shape triggers uh, through those thresholds. So that's very simple to set up and is basically agnostic to any language. You can plug in anything. That's the good side. But the bad side also is that, as you can see, it's not really mapping 100% in terms of the different mouth shapes uh, that are mapped to phonemes. So if this character maybe is more in the background and just sort of is just chatting away in the background and not really close to your, to your camera, then this is probably more than enough and it works quite well. But if you have your main character or maybe one of the, the main uh, protagonists that is really engaged in a conversation right in front of you, in front of your camera, then you might want to have some more accuracy and really use something like Lip Sync Pro to better show the lip sync uh, map to each phoneme. There's other advantages uh, for Salsa. Uh, one of the main reasons why I use it in a project is because it can also map those thresholds to a live input. So you could use microphone input and do this do this processing here automatically. And I really like that. And that's a really good way where you can have some life input into an application, but that's probably more of sort of an edge case or you know, less likely to be of relevance to a lot of projects. Because how, how often do you actually have input uh, through a microphone into your application and then one of the characters needs to move their lips according to that. But I thought that was really neat and that's why I'm using it in one of my projects and I really like it for that. Uh, for any other case, it might be more accurate and just better overall to use something like Lip Sync Pro, but it's really just my personal preference and you will have to find out which system works better for you. Now, before I switch over to Lip Sync Pro, I just want to add the randomized component here to this character so we can test some of the functionality there. Now, when we did this, it automatically added a randomized 3D eye position object to our character in the hierarchy. And we now have to add the skin mesh render again of our character. We now have different blend shapes again that the script is looking for, and that's uh, look up, look down, look, look left, and look right. Um, as you remember here from our blend shapes, we don't have any of those blend shapes. I didn't import those kind of blend shapes. But if we just leave them as is, it will just basically not work. Uh, so that the character is not going to be looking ar around a lot. But instead, I will just use the blink index, which is our eyes closed, to actually show you that at least this works. Uh, for look target, I can just use the camera for now. And then we have a lot of variables here to change how slowly or how often the character is blinking. I will just play this again and see how well this works. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you. So again, our, our speech works quite well, and you can see the character blinking. However, let me slow down the blinking, the blink speed. As you can see, the eyelids are properly moving. Unfortunately, the eyelashes, though, are static. And that is because we have two objects that actually need to be animated here. Because we have the blend shapes in both on the Genesis 8 female, and on the eyelashes as well. In order for the eyelids to move and the eyelashes to move, we need to take care of both objects, the Genesis 8 female and the Genesis 8 female eyelashes. So in order to move the eyelashes, I need to change this blend shape as well. And I didn't find any way to do this actually in, uh, in this randomized component. So from my perspective, with Genesis 8, this randomized component is not really usable. I haven't really used custom shapes yet. I'm not quite sure how this works. So if somebody wants to try this regardless, please feel free to. And also this uh, randomized definitely works with Genesis 2 and 3, just because with uh, Genesis 2 and 3 characters, um, I probably have a few here in the scene. Just if I click on this, 
This is Genesis 3 character. You can see there's bra and Genesis uh, shorts, Genesis 3 female, but there's no eyelashes. So this is really something, separate eyelashes, that was introduced in Genesis 8 for those characters. And really this makes it a bit more difficult um, because you have to deal with the blend shapes on all of these objects that are, that are relevant. All right, that's enough for randomize and for uh, Salsa 3D so far. And now let's switch over to Lip Sync, Light, and Pro. Let's remove all of those components here from this character. And let's start fresh with using Lip Sync Pro. For Lip Sync Pro, we now add a Lip Sync Pro component to the root object of the DAS character. We're now presented with a choice of blend system. Here I usually use the blend shape blend system. Now we need to select a character mesh, which is again the skin mesh renderer that we used previously with Salsa. We now have the option to add optional other meshes, and this is really important, especially for the eye control that we will use later. But it basically asks us, is there any other object that we also need to control where you might have blend shapes on multiple objects? And that was exactly the problem we had before with Salsa and, and Randomize. Now here for Lip Sync, we don't need any other meshes, but we will definitely make use of this feature in the later part of this video. So for now, we can just continue. Now it asks us for an audio source, and this one we actually have to add by hand. And what I usually do here is I open the hierarchy for our rig, and I look for the head or maybe even the, the jaw. So we might just add the uh, audio source here to the tongue. And we right click, audio, audio source. Now this audio source is here right uh, sort of in the mouth region where we need it. And we make sure that the position is at zero, 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 so it's in the right spot. And we just change the spatial blend from 2D to 3D so that really we have a 3D sound. Uh, play and awake we can leave for now, but probably later on we want to disable that just for testing now that we want to uh, play the sound actually. And now we just add our audio clip again, our lip sync test. And uh, that is that. Go back to our root object. And we drag this audio source here into Lip Sync Pro. Okay, now use bone transforms is going to be important for the other character from Character Creator 3, but here for DAS, we actually don't necessarily need that. What we now here have is a list of phonemes, and now we need to map our blend shapes to these phonemes. Here on the right, we actually have uh, the option to load a template. Unfortunately, there's no template here for the studio characters for Genesis 8, but if you set this all up here, you can then save this as a new preset so that later on, if you have other DAS Genesis 8 characters, you can then load this preset. All right, so let's dive in here. First of all, if I click on this phoneme, I sort of have this graphic here showing me what the mouth roughly needs to look like. Um, before I do anything else, I'm just going to here into gizmos. And I'm going to decrease the size of the gizmo because I don't want this audio source to be in the way. Okay, now with the AI uh, phoneme, I go into blend shapes and I see whether we can find a phoneme that's sort of mapping onto that. It's I, so maybe this is the IH here, and see how that maps. Um, it's not ideal. Maybe we need to open the mouth just a little bit more. Now the good thing is that you don't have to necessarily map it to just one blend shape. You can add multiple, and it's really mostly uh, the best way to add multiple blend shapes here. Let me find now another one that opens the mouth just a little bit wider. And you can see another advantage here is that we actually have control over the uh, strength of the blend shape. So we can really just blend a lot of blend shapes together at different strengths to really find the perfect combination. And uh, one other thing to note here is that you're not just limited to the blend shapes of the mouth. You can obviously also add other blend shapes for facial expressions. If you want sort of to overlay that something is happening with the eyes as well or other muscles in the face, 
So you really there's no limit to how complex you want to make this. The only limitation you have is that you're limited to those phonemes because those are all the phonemes that are relevant here for the system. Let's go to the next one. This is E. This might be one of those two, EH or just E. That's pretty good already. Right? U. And we have a blend shape here with uh, UW, which is probably. U. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's, uh, it's almost more like an O. Maybe if we add just opening the mouth just a little bit wider. A is usually a good candidate for opening the mouth, especially if we don't have a blend shape that specifically is just for opening and closing the mouth. Now, if you need to just open the, the jaw up just a little bit further, then that's where the use bone transforms uh, comes in. But I will show you this at, uh, for the other character. Um, for the rest of the phonemes, I will just now uh, speed this up a little bit and go through each of those phonemes uh, just at a, at a more rapid pace. Okay, so I think this is good enough for now. And uh, what we can now do is basically save this as a preset. Give it a name. That's Genesis 8. We can save. Now there's other things we can do and that's emotions. And you can edit the emotions so you can add more emotions apart from happy, serious, eyebrows up, sad, you can add any number of emotions here. Um, for that, I would have to ex export other blend shapes as well. So I will not cover this now, but that's definitely something you can do. And it basically works the same way. You just then click here and you add blend shapes, a combination of blend shapes that will express happy emotions. And then you can use those happy emotions to map onto your speech later on. Same goes for gestures, but the gestures are uh, based on an animator and animations. Okay. Now we can scale audio speed. Those are all just general settings here. Um, the timing is with the audio playback, which, which I like. Uh, basically, so the, the timing is all based on the audio clip that you put in instead of having a custom timer, which uh, will probably lead to some, some sort of desync between the audio and the phonemes and all of that. And uh, then you have the uh, uh, concept here of rest time. That's sort of how much time you have in between uh, since the last phoneme when you want to like switch to this rest phoneme. So far, just leaving everything here as a default, I actually had a pretty good ex experience with the mapping. So once this is all set up here, we can then uh, go on and deal with our audio clip. Save this here really quickly, and then let's go to Window. And for uh, Rogo Digital, we have get extensions. And with the extensions here, what we have is an auto sync language model. And this is only available for the uh, uh, Lip Sync Pro. So if you only have the light version and you just want to try it basically for free, then you would have to map phonemes by hand. And that can be quite time intensive. I've done it in the past with quite a bit of dialogue. It's because I wanted to use a language model for a different language that I didn't have. So I was actually mapping by hand, it took quite a bit of time, but still could get uh, pretty decent results once you get sort of in the groove of it of mapping all of these things. But for now, let me just uh, download the language model for uh, US English language. There's also a number of integrations for other uh, tools. So you could uh, integrate with uh, Playmaker, with Node Canvas, a lot of other tools. So there's really a, a lot of development done and I, I haven't tried any of these integrations, but the uh, language model, the auto mapping works really well and really makes it much easier to basically plug in any audio clip that you have, regardless of whether that's some, some music, some singing or, or any dialogue basically.
It works quite well. And that's what we will do right now. We will map uh, the audio clip that I recorded automatically. And we just confirm here. And we should be able to close this now. When we again go to Window, Google Digital, Lip Sync Pro, and we can open the clip editor. The clip editor, we just add our lip sync test up here. And you can see this is a test recording for the, the waveform here for our audio clip. clip. And I can scrub just this just like I can with any other clip. That's really good. And what we could do now theoretically is we could just go to any of these sections here and I could just add phoneme. So I could add a phoneme here and then really add which one, which phoneme I would want to choose here. And this is really sort of, this is really trying to imagine what what does the current test recording for the test recording Recording, so this would be a, a K and then an O and so on. So I would really then map all of these individually, and they're basically added like you would usually like add like uh, animation events, for example, um, where like a marker shows up. Here. Now, instead of doing that, I can also go up to Auto Sync here, and I can click on Start Default Settings or Start High Quality Settings. And you can see all of these were added automatically, all of these markers. And this option really just becomes available, this start default settings here, once you have the extension installed. If you haven't installed that, you will not be able to start this. And we can also switch over to emotions. So this is a if you want to change the emotions or add emotions uh, to any part of this clip here, then you just do that and the same goes for gestures. And this obviously requires you to set up the emotions and the gestures in advance in this uh, lip sync component here. Once we have done that, we can go to file and we can save as, and it will save it as an asset file. Just save it in audio. We can close this now. Now the last thing we need to do to complete this process is to go back to our Lip Sync Pro script here. And we have to either choose Play on Awake, which lets us uh, choose some Lip Sync data, which is what we just created in our uh, editor there. And we can just select the Lip Sync test file that we just created. And I can just play that. This is a test recording for this Lip Sync video in Unity. Thank you. Now, this is uh, far from perfect yet, so we can do a lot of tweaking here. Uh, we can go back and adjust those blend shapes. I really just did a, a very quick uh, selection of blend shapes here. There's a lot of quality to be gained to really select the blend shapes and a certain strength of each blend shape. So I think that's, that's something we can definitely improve. And the other thing is that we could also try to select the, uh, the high quality auto sync. So if I I go back to my file here, to the lip sync data file. I can go back and edit that. I could start high quality settings. And we can see the markers up here are slightly different. This is a text recording for the video. And we can just save that to the existing file. Go back and Play again. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you. Again, so the quality is not amazing right now, but I would not uh, attribute that necessarily to the quality of the lip sync system. That's just me, how I set up the uh, blend shape so far. All right, so that's basically how lip sync works with lip sync pro so far. Uh, let's add the um, my controller, actually let's stop playing first. And now let's add the eye controller. I just want to show you how this works. Again, we select a blend shape system. It auto recognizes the uh, skin mesh renderer. And in this case, now we need to add an optional other mesh 
and this would be the eyelashes skin mesh renderer. And now we can set up all of these different systems here. Blinking needs uh, blend shapes for both eyes. That's why I said uh, earlier in the video that we need a blend shape for left eye and for the right eye to blink individually. So left eye and right eye. And then we have a blink gap, a blink duration. So this is again sort of the speed parameters. The random looking uh, is all done automatically. We don't need any additional blend shapes here. And the look at target, uh, we could look at the camera. Uh, that also requires now that we have a left eye look at bone and a right eye look at bone. We would have to go into our hierarchy here. And the left eye. And everything else we can basically leave as it is. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you. Now it's looking at the camera, I believe. Quite sure where the camera is. Oh, camera's behind, so she's kind of confused. But you can see the blinking here actually works since it is also animating the eyelashes as well. It might be a little bit fast. We could slow this down a bit more, but it's definitely working. You can see she's following the camera, which is our target. You can see the eyes moving just a little bit far away. Okay, so this is this is working, and uh, that means that this eye controller definitely is uh, more compatible with Genesis Eight, just because we have those different uh, two different objects here that are relevant for our eyes. Okay, now this is all I wanted to show you for the Das character. Now that you sort of have an idea of how the Lip Sync Pro as it works. I just want to go back and uh, show you basically what I've set up here with this other character. And it works pretty much the same. I have sort of these different blends. The blends are a little bit, uh, the blend shapes are a little bit harder to identify because we have you know, those open explosive dental lip and so on. They're, they're differently named. They're not named after their phonemes. So it's a combination of those different blend shapes here and then we also have uh, just a general like open, uh, mouth open. The problem with the mouth open is that it doesn't actually move any of the jaw and that the the uh, teeth are going to be just visible and the, the, basically the, the jaw is going to be closed. So the one thing you have to do here when using this character creator three character is you have to check use bone transforms. Instead of add blend shape, you now also have these options to add bone transform and to also create a post from animation clip if you using animations, but what we would do here is add bone transform, and then you're selecting the uh, transform that is the uh, jaw root in this case, which is sort of at the, the back of the mouth here where the jaw starts and where you can basically control the opening of the mouth. And we would then change the rotation, uh, the uh, Z component, the Z component of the rotation uh, fr from 270, in this case, I think it always starts at 270 degrees. I changed it to 265 to open the mouth just this little bit. I'll show you what the difference is. So the mouth basically is, while the, the lips are open and apart, the teeth are, are uh, closed, the jaw is closed. And if I change that to 265, you can see the mouth opens. And this is really the difference uh, to sort of create this pose for the for the phoneme, we have to add this jaw root, and we have to add that in quite a few cases. Basically, whenever the mouth is open, even just a little bit, and when it's not enough to just move the lips around, this is when you need the bone transform here for the jaw root, and that's why it makes this uh, the system really flexible. Um, so if you were to try to emulate 
all of the phonemes here with this character just with uh, blend shapes, then you would be out of luck because all of the blend shapes here that are automatically exported by Character Creator 3 don't move the jaw, they only move the lips. All right. And basically you just go through, you add different combinations and that's pretty much it. You leave everything else as it was uh, previously with the other character. The same goes for the eye controller, again, using the blend shape blend system, auto recognizes the skin mesh render where you use the base body merged. So here uh, you have the eyes, uh, but not separately. It's uh, merged into one mesh. You have the body mesh, which contains all the, the blend shapes. And the eye controller then just needs the uh, eye blink left, eye blink right. So they are separate here as well. So that's good. The eyes can be open and closed separately. So that works with the eye controller for Lip Sync Pro. Uh, you have all the other uh, parameters here, just like before. And when we play this, let's have a look at how this works. This is a test recording for this Lip Sync video in Unity. Okay, so she's blinking. We don't have a look at target set here. That's all fine. Now what we'll do is we will also add a play on awake for her, add the lip sync data, and we will disable play on awake for her so that we can actually see how this works, that we can see how this character talks. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you. And I actually like uh, the uh, animation here, the uh, uh, lip sync a little bit better. And I think this is because I spent more time setting up the individual blend shapes for this character. Uh, let's do that again. And you can see since I have not a target selected for her, she's actually looking around sort of randomly. Uh, this is the uh, uh, different look at behavior if there's no target selected. This is a test recording for this lip sync video in Unity. Thank you. Okay. And that's all there is. So we have our two characters set up. And um, if you have any questions about any of the setup, both uh, either with Lip Sync Pro or Lip Sync Lite or the uh, Salsa with Randomize, then please let me know. Leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.